As the world concerns itself with Trump's ban on refugees and debates the legalities of decrees, we turn our attention to the Mediterranean and Libya as we discussed several months ago. Russia has been quietly courting Libya's general Khalif Haftar. As angels are busy with players on the world chessboard, reorienting them into positions for Ezekiel 38 and Daniel 11 to play out, we are reminded that one of these players is Libya, as we read in Ezekiel 38, in verses 3 to 5. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. And again, we read in Daniel chapter 11, verses 42 to 43, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Well, we examined the background of Libya and its connection to Russia a while ago. This quiet relationship between Russia and Libya made its way back into the news in the past few weeks, as the Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov steamed back from Syria to the Baltic port, it traveled by Libya, where it made a stop, invited General Khalif Haftar abroad. This move has sparked commentary from many political sources who see Russia's involvement in Libya as an extension of its Syria policy, expanding its influence. France 24 held an interview with Arnaud Dubien, the director of the France Russian Observatory, who stated the Russians are pursuing a concrete policy by openly betting on Haftar, who leads the dominant force in Libya. It would be effective for the Russians to play the Libyan game after the Syrian one, which is coming to a close, in order to mark their influence in the Mediterranean by saying that, as in Syria, so in Libya too, we are unavoidable. Vladimir Putin sought to reinvest in the African continent, and more generally in the former Soviet allies. However, this time the framework of the new engagement was less ideological and more concerned with economics. It was perceived by Putin in the context of the Arab Spring as something engineered by the West and a definite threat to Russian influence and preventing the West from repeating their Libyan actions in Syria became one of the principal motivations for allying so closely with Bashar al-Assad's regime in Syria. End quote. Well now, Russia is moving to pick up the pieces back in Libya and wrestle it from the grip of anarchy. Well, Russia's move into this vacuum created by the U.S. withdrawal has been noted. The Obama administration played heavily into Russia's hands by taking a disengagement strategy throughout the world and especially the Middle East. Author Megan O'Priya wrote in an article for The Federalist entitled While the U.S. Leaders Fiddle, Russia Makes Strategic Moves in Libya, where she stated, Russia's increased involvement in Libya is another sign that President Vladimir Putin seeks a resurgent Russia that holds sway with allies throughout the Middle East. Russia has taken advantage of the outgoing administration's penchant for leaving behind power vacuums. Obama's withdrawal of troops in Iraq allowed ISIS to gain territory there and across the border in Syria. Similarly, Obama's refusal to follow through after his chemical weapons red line in Syria made it clear that the United States would not act to prevent Assad from slaughtering his people in a brutal civil war. Russia stepped easily in and became the primary outside influence in that war. Obama's action, or inaction, in Syria has also allowed Russia to test its military equipment and practice tactics and maneuvering there, a rehearsal that it can now take on the road, both in the Eastern European and elsewhere in the Middle East and North Africa. 
This brings to mind German and Italian aid to the fascists in the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. Their support ensured them a fascist ally with French borders during the World War II and gave them an opportunity to test their newly rearmed militaries and air forces. End quote. Well, Germany's lightning war strategy was tested in fascist Spain, and tactics were quickly deployed in Nazi Germany's Blitzkrieg, or lightning war, as its troops raced across Europe, enslaving its masses with barely any successful resistance until it became bogged down after it turned upon its ally Russia. Well, Opria reflects on Trump's arrival as reminiscent of the Americans' position prior to World War II. She writes, Trump's remarks since announcing his run for presidency have also smacked of an isolationism reminiscent of Obama's foreign policy. Trump called for an American first policy, which harkens back to the American isolationism of the 1920s of 30s, when there was a general feeling that we shouldn't have anything to do with the troubles abroad. This emboldened belligerent countries, who took this as a sign that the United States wanted nothing to do with Europe's problems and would intervene and wouldn't intervene in any renewed conflicts. End quote. Well, the refugee influx into Europe has created a crisis. Many of the refugees have come from Syria and North Africa. In light of this, Europe has begun changing the way it has been dealing with Russia. In fact, the refugee crisis hitting the shores of Italy and France is mostly coming from North Africa. European nations have begun to look to Russia to help solve the crisis by restoring stability in Libya. CNN reported this past week that EU leaders are turning to Russia as they seek to stabilize Libya and stem the flow of immigrants departing its shores for Europe and combat Islamic terrorism. End quote. This is following success in Syria. As the same CNN piece reflected, Anna Walker, Associate Director for Europe at the Business Risk Consultancy Cons Control Risks, said Russia was seeking to exert its influence in the region to help reinforce its position as a power on the world stage. In Syria, Russia has been able to act as a power broker, bringing the warring sides together for talks, whereas others have failed, Walker said. And it may seek the same role in Libya. Certainly, by engaging with different political actors in Libya, it's looking to reassert its presence there, not necessarily military, but as another power player in the region, she said. End quote. Well, while Italy and some European leaders are looking toward Russia, others, such as Malta, are concerned with Russia's influence in the area. The publication Politico reported last week having cemented Russia's role as a dominant belligerent against the pro-Western Ukraine, where the half-frozen conflict in the east has flared up in the past week, and in Syria, where a fragile ceasefire has taken hold with Moscow's ally Bashar al-Assad still in power, President Putin has turned his attention to Libya. For Europe, this raises the worrying prospect that Russia could gain control over the flow of migrants across the central Mediterranean, giving Putin leverage to destabilize Europe by unleashing a flood of refugees, like the exodus from Syria that caused the crisis in Europe in 2015. End quote. So some European nations believe that Putin is making strategic use of the refugee crisis to bring Europe on side with his political aims and objectives. By allowing refugees out of areas it controls or creating a situation where refugees might want to flee, pressure can be applied on Europe. The article goes on to state, Many EU leaders mistrust Putin's motives, fearing Russia will impede international efforts to strengthen the fragile government in Tripoli by encouraging continued fighting, or even installing a pro-Russian government. Libya is the main launching point for migrant crossing the Mediterranean to Europe. Effort to halt such crossings and the potential for Russia to complicate them will top the agenda at the Malta summit. End quote. So having Syria tied up with the air base and a naval port, Libya would be a strategic and convenient place to expand their influence. The same Politico article stated, 
Russia appears to be working to end the UN embargo on sales to Libya and has made clear it wants to provide greater assistance to Haftar and his forces in the east. During his visit to the Kud uh, Kuznetsov aircraft carrier, Haftar was given medical supplies for Libyan fighters. End quote. While Leonardo Tricarico, a retired Italian general who presides over the Intelligence, Culture, and Strategic Analysis Foundation, a Rome-based think tank told Politico, Russia is in the process of achieving day-to-day -day a role in determining the balance in the Middle East and now in the Mediterranean. It is a role that must be acknowledged, end quote. Well, whatever the political, economic, or strategic interests Russia has, we know her destiny is to be aligned with Libya in the latter days. As we see the angels at work in arranging world affairs, we know that the days are short. Let us look up and lift up our heads, for our redemption is indeed drawing nigh. For the Bible in the News, this has been Jonathan Bowen joining you.